our sure foundation, Christ is head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one, holy Zion's help forever, and her confidence alone. To this temple we in glory, come great Lord of hosts to as they pray, and your fullest benediction shed in all its brightest ray. Grant, we pray, to all your people all the grace they ask to Sisters and brothers, wherever you are, whatever the time of day, be welcome. Sorry I've been offline for a while. We had a hurricane this last week. Came ashore early, early Monday morning and uh, put more than two million people out of power. Took down the internet. Uh, fortunately, last night the internet returned. Power's been up and down ever since. Lots of people doing a lot of good things to try and make our lives back to a more normal place, but we're not normal yet. Uh, we've lost friends and loved ones, and we'll probably lose more as the uh, heat wave continues and the lack of electricity makes it impossible for some of our elderly and poor to be able to stand the heat. And we ask God if at all possible, to calm the winds and cool the temperatures and keep us all safe. We begin in the name of the Most Holy Trinity, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Hear this, O Israel. Our God is sovereign and singular. We shall love our God with all our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. Our God alone shall we serve. Hear this, O Israel, we shall love our neighbors as ourselves. On these two great commandments hang all the law and the prophets too. Let us pray. Most high and glorious God, we give you thanks for your protection and your love. We give you thanks that the hurricane was not worse than it was. We ask your blessing upon us in all things. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison 
Forgive us all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lift up your voices and give glory to God, the eternal shepherd. Kadisha Allah, Kadisha Kalatana, Kadisha Lama Yutah, Ephraim Aios hoteos, aios iskiros, aios athamnatos, eleisonimas, sanctus teus, sanctus potis, sanctus Immortalis, miserere nobis. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever and ever, unto ages unending. Amen and Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. A reading from the second book of Samuel. David again gathered all the chosen of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of Hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the Ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded up with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread and a portion of meat and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord showed me. 
The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus has Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos said to Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from the following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious name, that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have obtained the inheritance, having been destined according to to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, through the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. King Herod heard of Jesus and his disciples. For Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah. Others said, It is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who had arrested John, bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John, the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. 
Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We listen today to trials and tribulations and prophecies and what happens to prophets. People who speak truth to power, people who tell others what you're doing is wrong, you're not following God's will, you're not taking care of the poor, you're not working with the widows and the orphans, you're not making everything better around you. They usually get in trouble with the rich and the powerful. Why? Well, because the rich and the powerful want to remain rich and powerful. And that's not what God calls us to be. God doesn't say, I want everybody to be rich and powerful. God says, I want everybody to love. It's a radically different statement. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus old-school prophet, living out in the wilderness, being ascetic as, as could possibly be, you know, wild honey and locusts and wearing a simple robe. Yeah, but holy and caring about the direction the people of God were headed. Pissed off some folks including Herod. Now, Herod was upset by him because he's being told by him, no, you can't do this thing that you've done. And at the same time, Herod is like, yeah, but man, ooh, he's, he's saying things that I know here he's right. Gets tricked into, allowed into, beheading John the Baptist. It's happened to many a prophet throughout the centuries. You say something the king doesn't want, off with his head. But we still are required by our love, if we have it, to say those things. To say, look, the, the widow and the orphan need to be taken care of. The stranger among us needs to be looked after. We need to care for one another rather than what our world tells us, which is accumulate wealth. When you have eight people who have basically as much wealth as half the world, something's wrong. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. And God calls us time and time and time again to put our minds in one with his. If we did, if we loved one another as Christ has loved us, we could solve every problem in the world today. It's that simple. Our mindset, our feelings inside tell us, no, no, I want to be better than that person. I want to be able to look down on them. I know, we, we say we don't want to do that, but it's a pretty human thing. Well, there, insert whatever differencing you want to use. So they're evil. I can look down on them. It's not what God calls us to. God calls us to love. The unwashed, those people who smell bad, those people who look funny, those people who can't hold down a job so they don't have a place to live? Yeah. Them especially. God calls us to be radical witnesses, to be rooted in this gospel, this good news, and to care for one another. It's a daunting task. It is not easy. But it's worth it. 
And if we were all to do it, I'm convinced today we, we, we would actually be living in paradise. Please, God, change our hearts, change our minds. Let us join in the symbol of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead, on the third day rose again, ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us, whom peace decrees, represent the cherubims, represent the cherubims, and who sing the thrice holy hymns to the light creating, to the light creating Trinity. Now lay aside all earthly cares, lay aside all earthly cares, lay aside all earthly cares. O oh God, holy and mighty, who accepts the sacrifice of praise from your people, Accept the prayers we now offer to you. Help us to offer these gifts we have been given for our sake and for all of creation. Grant us the grace to be a living sacrifice and acceptable to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to our God. Let us give God thanks, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is right, good, and joyful always and everywhere to give you thanks, gracious God. In your immense love, you have made covenant with us, bringing all creation to life. Again and again, you have sealed that covenant in Abraham and Sarah and their offspring. And when the time was ripe, you gave us your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He walked among us as a sign of your blessedness and faithfulness. And finally, he embraced the world's suffering and death's darkness in obedience to your covenant. Because of this, you raised him up, giving us a new and blessed life. Therefore, we join with the angels and saints in proclaiming your blessedness and ours as well. Forever we proclaim the glory of your holiness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Gracious God, 
Your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, teaches us to seek your holiness. He assures us, speaking heart to heart, that we are blessed when poor in spirit, for to the poor belongs the realm of heaven. Blessed are the poor, and blessed are we who are poor in spirit. Jesus comforts us in our mourning. He blesses us when we are weak, and promises that the earth will be our inheritance. When we hunger and thirst for what is right, we will be filled with the utter fullness of God. And being merciful, we will find the blessings of mercy given to us. Blessed are the merciful, and blessed are we who show mercy. It is the Holy Spirit's blessing for us to see the very face of God in our becoming pure of heart. We are truly your children, gracious God, when we bless our world with peace. And when lies, slander, and persecution come to us because we belong to your Son, you promise us reward in your realm. So with joy we take our place with the prophets of old. Blessed God and your beloved Son, we seek to be a blessing, doing what he asks of us. So we remember that Jesus took bread and wine. He gave thanks to you, saving to his disciples. Take this bread. Drink this cup. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. When you eat and drink here, I live in you and you in me, and sin has lost its sway. Blessed are we who eat this body and drink this cup. We know what Jesus has done for us in his death. We live on the faith of his resurrection and his return to you. We stand ready in hope to greet him when he comes again in glory. On that last day, may we be gathered with all your blessed ones, God of our ancestors. It is with all your churches that we pray, offering the sacrifice. We ask that those who are leaders in the church, myself, your unworthy servant, serve that we may be ready signs of your comfort, mercy, and peace. May we labor long and lovingly to be a blessing to all, spending ourselves for your sake. For we proclaim your death in us, Lord Jesus, until you come. Loving God, may your Holy Spirit bless us and our gifts to be the very body and blood of him who will return. Holy Spirit, you mold us, shape us, and fashion us into the Christ, the head of the body whose members we are. Make us bold to bless those who mourn, who seek what is good and holy. Make us worthy members of your mercy and peace, so that Christ may be all in all. Blessed be God forever. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit who prompts us to pray those words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread we break, is it not a sharing? in the body of Christ. The cup we drink, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? We who eat this bread and drink this cup shall have life everlasting. God shall raise us up on that last day. Here are God's gifts for God's people. Remember that Christ has died for you. Feed on him faithfully. Partake of this heavenly food and drink with hearts full of thanks and praise. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. God with hidden majesty lies in presence here. I with deep devotion my true God reveal, whom this outward shape and form secretly contain. Christ in his divinity, manhood still retains. All my other senses cannot now perceive, but my hearing taught by faith always will believe. I accept whatever God the Son has said. Those who hear the word of God by the truth are fed. God lay stretched upon the cross, only man could die. Here upon the altar, God and man both lie. This I firmly hold as true, this is my belief, and I seek salvation like the dying thief. Wounds the doubting Thomas saw I could never see. But I still acknowledge you my true God to be. Grant that I shall always keep strong in faith and trust. Guided by my Savior, merciful and just. Blessed reminder of the death suffered for mankind. Sacrament of living bread, health to every mind. Let my soul approach you. Live within your grace. Let me taste the perfect joys. Time shall not efface. We have feasted on God's word in this holy banquet. Made bold. Let us make known our prayers and petitions. For continued protection from severe storms. For justice and peace throughout the world. For refugees and exiles. For the homeless and the destitute. For prisoners and the lonely. For our families and friends. For ourselves. For all those who have gone before us. In a particular way. For Terry Saint's aunt. For all those prayers held deeply in our heart and known to God alone. All these prayers we make in the name of Jesus Christ who lives now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. May this worship bear fruit in our lives. May God be praised in our words and deeds. May we walk with God, be blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve. Thanks be to God.